huge sign go up on Federal Street? Yeah. It has? Yeah. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of May 4th, 2017. I'm City Council President Dick White and I'll be presiding today. Um, as is our custom, we invite the public to come and speak during the public comment session. Um, the rules are essentially we ask that you speak, keep your comments to under three minutes, uh, state your name and address when you come up to speak for the public record and also acknowledge and recognize the fact that the council is precluded from speaking at this time. So don't direct questions to them because they're by our rules not allowed to return or respond. Uh, so all that said, uh, I have but one person signed up or here and that's Barry Roth. Um, Bill, um, and I was getting to address you but what I have to say is uh, for the general public in general, and there's little, little point in making a presentation if it's not being recorded. It, it is being recorded. It is being recorded? It, That's running? Yes. Well, no. The, these cameras up here are running, Barry. Oh, this is okay. being recorded. It's being televised. So okay, great. Live. Ste step up and state your name and your address, please. My name is Barry Roth. My address is 88 Acrebrook Drive, Florence, Massachusetts. I'm here to talk about this and this. That has that has that has to do with the um, Democratic Party seeking to alter its party platform. I'm here to s seek yours and listeners' support for two plank positions submitted for the June Democratic Party platform convention, which says, in essence, we need to raise awareness of the impact of the ever increasing population on the planet. Many city councils have told me this is a taboo subject which we are not permitted to touch, to discuss. But if climate change is a legitimate issue, we must. There's no choice. Let's by asking some, begin by asking some questions. Which is more responsible for human starvation historically and into the future? Is it global climate change or human population growth? Which is more responsible for water scarcity and pollution? Is it global climate change or is it human population growth? Which is more responsible for the ethnic tensions, wars, and genocide around the world? Is it global climate change or is it human population growth? Which is more responsible for habitat loss? loss? Is it global climate change or is it human population growth? Which is more responsible for the massive species extinction? Is it global climate change or is it human population growth? Is the human population explosion caused by global climate change? Or is climate change caused in large measure by the growth of the human population? In all cases, the culprit is human population growth. The U.S. population grew by 40 million people between 1970 and 2000. The U.S. population is on a growth path that will take it to 450 million people mid-century. As the world population doubled in the last 50 years and swells past 7 billion, we are witnessing globally air and water pollution, food and water scarcity, habitat loss, and mass extinguishing of all the diversity of, of life not seen in the last 65 million years. Many living things not immediately annihilated by loss of habitat are subjected to horrendous conditions to meet growing human needs. We have witnessed the growing ethnic and religious tensions and outright war as surging populations result in conflicting groups pressing up against each other. The resulting mass famine and war are leading to waves of immigration as people flee. And as fast as we raise people from poverty, the numbers of births means that the absolute number of people living in poverty continues to rise. While Massachusetts has made good efforts to preserve land, an average of 13 acres a day of forest to convert it to developed land. Between 2005 and 2013, 40,000 acres of land were converted to development. We can see ample evidence of this here in Northampton. We recognize that sensitive cultural and religious issues are involved. We recognize that historically, in some cases, extreme measures were used which trampled on fundamental human rights in seeking to curtail population growth. We recognize that many people use the size of the GDP as a gauge of success. Just, and larger markets 
make for bigger prop profits. It is possible with progressive actions to curtail the current population growth while still growing the economy. We believe doing so will result in a world which is much better for both human beings, the environment, and all the other living things with which we share the planet. If it is possible for the Pope Francis right. to call for human beings to stop reproducing like rabbits, certainly it is permissible for Democrats to at least raise awareness of the issue. Barry. And more important, just to say, just for one second. One sentence? Yeah. And more importantly, how can we mock Trump's anti-science position on climate change, and why should anyone take seriously our alarms over climate change if we won't even talk about it? Number one course. Thank you. Please, let's have a discussion on it. Let's have a, a, a resolution on it like we did on climate change. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, that's all we have signed up. Does anyone else wish to speak at this time, public comment? No? I'll ask the administrative assistant to please call the roll. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Councilor Hardy. Present. Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor LeBar. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Nash. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Councilor Sheriff. Here. All right. We're all here, so we have a quorum. And we can get right to it. Are there any uh, one minute announcements by councilors? Councilor Bidwell. Um, yes. Two weeks from tonight, uh, at, uh, at, at 7 o'clock at the Academy, there's going to be a special screening of a film called Generation Found. It's about how Houston banded together to tackle youth addiction issues. And we got a preview of this at our meeting of the uh, City Services Committee earlier, earlier this week. And it's being put on by um, Landscapes, run by Craig Stevens, who does this incredible job of employing uh, folks in recovery, and uh, he's, he's dedicated to this issue, and he has purchased uh, the Academy for airing of this really quite extraordinary film. I've seen a preview of it. Unfortunately, none of us can be there, but for those folks who fi might find that even more interesting than a city council meeting, I would, I would uh, really uh, encourage attendance. Generation Found, two weeks from tonight at 7 o'clock at the Academy. Thank you. Councilor O'Donnell. I'd like to re-announce the uh, uh, meeting that I announced last council meeting, just to make sure everyone gets it. Uh, Tuesday, May 16th at 5.30 here in the City Council Chambers, the Transportation and Parking Commission uh, will have a public hearing to hear from people uh, about the possibility of installing two permanent speed bumps on Nonatuck Street. Uh, the DPW has uh, recommended doing so, and the Transportation Parking Commission now wants to have uh, citizen input on whether uh, to also recommend that uh, to the mayor who will make the final decision. Uh, that's Tuesday, May 16th. Our meeting starts at 5, but the hearing on this issue starts at 5.30. And if you can't make it, um, feel free to call or email me uh, with your thoughts and comments. And you can find that information on the city website. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> Councilor Carney and then and Councilor Shara. Yes, there's a uh, public hearing on May 9th uh, by Mass Dot DOT regarding the intersection at Damon Road. I uh, believe it's at 6:30 here in Council Chambers on May 9th, uh, and I would encourage anyone who is interested in that uh, project to attend. And. DOT, of course, is the Department of Transportation here for Massachusetts. Councilor Shara. Um, next, no, two Mondays. Next Monday, uh, Monday, May 15th from 7 to 9 p.m. at JFK, the Northampton Democratic City Committee is having their annual meeting. Um, uh, Senate President Stan Rosenberg will be there, Representative Peter Cocott, someone from um, uh, Senator Warren's office will be there, someone from um, Congressman McGovern's office will be there. And in addition um, to the business of you know, the annual meeting, there will also be local um, uh, groups that will be coming to talk about um, the activist work that they're doing and to help people uh, figure out ways to get involved. So that's 7 to 9 at JFK on Monday, May 15th. All Democrats are welcome, not just from Northampton. Anyone else? Uh, so a reminder that this weekend features the Pride March here in Northampton. Uh, this one with a new urgency, vested in with a new urgency, given circumstances uh, nationally. 
So uh, I, my regrets, I will not be able to attend, but I know that there will be a good showing of the council here. So, um, Your Honor, you're up. Look at that, a foam court check. Thank you. <laughs> good evening. Uh, yes, um, it's always a little awkward standing with a giant check with the auditor uh, standing behind me. So I'll get to explaining why I have this giant check. Size doesn't count. <laughs> no, exactly. The man with the foam um, check. So uh, uh, last week, both myself and Councillor Labarge attended the annual uh, volunteer appreciation lunch at the Senior Center, which is the annual um, recognition to the um, hundreds of volunteers who give of their time every year uh, to, to volunteer to make different programs work, to organize events. Um, and, uh, and each year they tally up, um, you know, for the, the previous year, in this case it's for 2016, um, how many volunteer hours were actually given at the Senior Center. So for 2016, um, it was 11,815 volunteer hours that were contributed. Um, and they often, and they do a calculation based on minimum wage of what the worth of those volunteer hours are. And so uh, they presented me, as they do every year with this uh, faux check, uh, for $278,395.56, which, uh, which is the equivalent of, of all of those volunteer hours. Um, and so I just wanted to, as I did at the uh, luncheon, just publicly acknowledge and thank you know, the, the many, many volunteers who give of their time and their expertise um, to help make the uh, Senior Center such a vibrant uh, community resource for um, uh, older folks in our community. So, and they wanted me to show this, and so I'm bringing it here, so. Okay? Okay. That is my communication. I note that, that, that actually, last year they gave you a check the size of a minibus. Uh, I, th I recall that you struck it was on an easel I think yeah, it was probably a little bigger last yes, year. Yeah. Yeah. so anyway uh, the amount is bigger this the amount is bigger so thank you thank you that's my only communication okay so I move on to resolutions and these are second readings in this case is uh, item 17.287 the resolution in support of the Senate bill 1305 it's an act to protect the civil rights and safety of all Massachusetts residents aka the safe communities act and as I said it's a second reading I'll accept a motion Second. Okay. Any further discussion on this? Well, it's a resolution, but do you prefer a uh, roll call on this? Roll call. Uh, Councilor Dell. Can I just ask a question? Last time we uh, uh, discussed a possible amendment to clarify. Right. Good point. Uh, is that something we're still entertaining? Or okay. Yeah. So, okay. so uh, do we have the language for the amendments? I didn't bring it because I assumed it was going to be modified by the sponsors. It's, it's on our documents in red, I believe. Right. It's as okay. amended. In <coughs> so that was the, that is non-criminal and not subject to a judicially issued warrant, and then also cities and towns. So we have, and you had proposed. Um, actually, where was it? You were do oh, is this only the? I, I do have the wording. Okay. So on the last whereas. Registry of Motor Vehicles to DHS for the purposes of enforcement of any federal program requiring registrations of persons, persons on the basis of race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, or other national, I'm sorry, or national or ethnic origin or and prohibit local law enforcement, including county sheriffs from ordering their employees to act as immigration agents. And then you had also suggested um, to include Speaker Robert DeLeo in the right. further 
Be it further resolved that Councilor asks Governor Charles Baker and Speaker Robert DeLeo. So, I mean, I, I won't make the motion to add that amendment. I explained it last time, but um, I explained it last time and the sponsors wanted to wait to examine the language. Suggest the amendment, though. I mean, put it on the floor again. Well, I, I could, but I, I'll just leave it to this. I mean, this amendment's been stated. I'll leave it to the sponsors to see if they want to do it. motion to accept the amendment okay. from Councillor O'Donnell. Uh, just the first one, the adding um, Speaker DeLeo, though, mm -hmm. um, we've gotten some uh, counsel from some interested parties that it's not necessary to add him um, specifically. Uh, so I, I'm not sure that I feel comfortable with that amendment, but the first amendment I feel um, fine about By the way, can I get a second on the amendment before we continue to discuss second. this? Okay. Uh, anyone else want to speak to that? Um, insofar as it being redundant, I think the point is that I think the original reason it was proposed is because Speaker DeLeo's uh, ambivalence, we'll call it, and it, it, it seemed important to specifically indicate that this be directed to him so that he have an opportunity to see it if he so chooses. Mm -hmm. Councilor Shara. Um, I'm fine with leaving him out of that section because it sounds like you've had a conversation that pertains to that. Um, but I would like to have him added to the last paragraph so that he gets a copy perhaps. Is he not there? I don't, am I missing him? He should be there. I don't see him. <clears throat> no. Nope, he didn't make the cut. Yeah. I don't see. I don't see. So I would agree be there. with that. And um, just to put a little finer point on this question of whether or not we want to add him with uh, Governor Baker because he has expressed his lack of support. Um, he, his, I contacted his office directly and I did not get a response, but in conversations with Representative Kokut, he, um, he felt strongly that we should not be calling uh, Speaker DeLeo out on this because he is um, possibly moderating his position and, um, and that to kind of put him in the same boat with uh, Governor Baker, who has very explicitly said he doesn't support it, would, would just be misrepresenting it and put pressure on him in a way that might not be positive. So the recommendation from our representative's office was that we not include him. I would agree with that. I, from the, the research that I did, it seemed, I feel like the tenor between, you know, it was different from what he was saying than, than Governor Baker, who had, who was much more definitive in what he was saying. So I think it's. Right. So, <coughs> so can we say that the modified amendment would to include Speaker DeLeo in the final, be it further resolved as far as forwarding the uh, the, re the final resolution, and remove and not include him in the paragraph that lumps him in with the governor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But it also would include the language, and we would uh, that would be the second to last resolve that uh, the <coughs> language that Pam gave us. Okay. Right. So those are the, those are the amendments, uh, Councilor O'Donnell. It's fine with me to admit the speaker, but I'll state for the record that, as far as I know. His position is identical to the governor's. <laughs> they both said, you know, cities and towns should figure this out for themselves. And then he may have, may have shifted from that to no position. But as far as I know, his last public position was against it. Neither here nor there, perhaps, but note that for the record. On the amendments as, as they now stand, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So, to back to the second reading of the uh, amended version of the resolution, uh, any further discussion? Oh. And I heard the preference for a roll call on this, so roll call please. Roll Council, call. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. That passes unanimously in second reading. 
Next item up is item 17.295. This is a resolution calling on the Massachusetts legislature to establish carbon pollution pricing to curb climate change. This is second reading. Move approval. Second. Motions made and seconded. Any further discussion on this or amendments? Uh, preference on a roll call, too? Yep. Well, we get used to this, so okay. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lavard? Yes. 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 That passes in second reading. Next up, we have uh, presentation. This is the 2016 year end audit review by Scanlon Associates. Um, you're up. This is, Scanlon, you're, this, is your, this is your moment in the sun. The um, and for counselors who are wondering, the uh, on the mayor's page on uh, the city site is the is the entire audit, including uh, the the management letter as well. But, no, All right. Uh, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Tom Scanlon Jr. I'm the managing partner at Scanlon Associates. Uh, we my firm did uh, the audit uh, this year for June 30, 2016. I know uh, back in February we met with uh, the subcommittee, the finance subcommittee, went through it in detail. I'm not, I don't know if I'll go into the full detail tonight. Um, I bore you to death on that. I'll hit the highlights. Um, the audit went real well. Uh, we encountered uh, no issues with management, um, no difficulties in the audit. Um, we did, uh, we gave the city an unmodified opinion. Um, that's the main purpose of an audit, uh, is to apply on your financial statements, so you're unmodified. So what that means is the bond rating agencies and the grant awarding agencies look at you as a positive light. Look at that. That's the first thing they look at is that opinion, um, so which is good. Uh, so the financial team should be congratulated on that. Um, just some general highlights of the financial thing. I don't know if you have it in front of you or if, uh, on pages 18 and 19. Bond rating agencies look at you. Um, your financial policies are working. Uh, what you have, uh, if you look on page 18, under unassigned fund balance under the general fund, you'll see the number of 12.8 million. Um, what that is made up of is your free cash, which is about 4.8 million, and your stabilization funds, which is about 7.8 million. Those are your two main reserves. Uh, they total about just over 11 million. Um, your budget's approximately about 85 million. A good, sound um, financial policy reserve is between six and 10 percent. You're well over 10 percent. You're about 14 percent. So, uh, a year ago, I believe the city got upgraded to a AAA rating. Um, this is indicative of it uh, as they look at you. Is any flip on page 19? that change in fund balance and when you look under the general fund that 3.2 million the last three years you have had um, there you go <laughs> yeah the last three years your fund balance have been increasing one by your policies you're putting it into stabilization fund um, this is not coming from free cash to stabilization because that won't change your total reserves um, so you're using it in your tax rate and putting it away. So that's how you're getting, it's one component of your bond rating. So your financial policies are working um, and your financial statements are indicative of that. And just the final statement I kind of want to touch bases on is on page 22. It is your budget versus actual. As we can see, the top half uh, is your revenues. Uh, your, you budget about 83 million in revenues. You collected 85 million, about 1.9 million um, in excess of what you budgeted. The city is very conservative, uh, which is sound practice. Uh, you can see under hotel room occupancy and meals tax, about 1.1. You collected about just under 1.4. Um, again, that's market driven, so you want to be conservative, which you are. So you have a nice blend of license permits and fees. Um, your excess over your budget, 643,000. Again, it's not one item that put you over that. It's a whole 
mixture from building permits to parking fees to ambulance fees. Uh, so again, you're very well conservative and proper budgeting on there. Uh, on the expenditure side, you had turn backs about just under about 2.2 million. Um, again, on an $85 million budget, you have the proper turn backs. Uh, you can see you had a high turn back under public safety, which that came from the police, which I believe was positions that. Vacancies. Yeah, a lot of vacancies. Yeah. Um, so again, it's kind of a one time, um, but again, you have some good policies of the last three years. And that is what's driving your free cash as we go down and look uh, on the bottom line that variance 4.2 million with your free cash gets set by about 4.4 mm -hmm. uh, again this is what's driving your free cash so you're very conservative in that manner um i don't know if there's any questions on that uh, any questions from the council on the presentation so, uh, and actually I should point out that the reason we invited Mr. Scanlon to come speak was this is an opportunity for the public to hear of the audit report, um, you know, warts and all, but it, and there, there were some uh, recommendations also made, Yep. but it was an opportunity for the council, uh, the finance committee to have a much denser uh, uh, presentation previously, so, but so, uh, did you did you would you speak to some of the recommendations? Yeah, so that's what I was going to touch on next. So, you know, part of the Thank management you. letter is the the byproduct of an audit. Um, as we design our tests or procedures, as we go through and look at your financial statements, it's a risk based audit. So, we're testing controls. We spend a lot of time in the treasurer's and collector's office is because that is where your main revenue streams are coming. So we're doing a lot of bank level testing on your bank statements, uh, ensuring that your reconciliations are taking place, um, ensuring your controls are working over your significant transactions. Um, we do have some recommendations. Uh, we have four current year recommendations. Uh, probably talk about two of them, I think, are the more priorities is the health insurance withholding account of your employees. Uh, you take out uh, contribution of the health insurance out of your employees pay and it's just sitting withholding and that was a, when the bill comes in it should be broken down accordingly um, this last quarter of the year uh, the control is kind of broken down on that um, again it wasn't material but we're auditors we like to be right to the penny we like to try to stay ahead of uh, the issues again subsequent to uh, our audit um, period June 30th uh, we met with um, the staff went over, they, they implemented procedures, um, and as of, I think, December, the, the situation has rectified. Um, and I, I know we're planning on coming back sometime here in May to uh, just double follow up on that. Um, the other uh, suggestion is the water, sewer, and stormwater accounts. Uh, we proposed a couple adjustments to the receivables um, on the general ledger. Again, you should have procedures in place where you're balancing the general ledger, which is kind of your financial Bible of the city, back to the individual detail of the accounts uh, with subsidiary ledgers, which is the residents, individual payers who is outstanding, reconciled back to the general ledger. That was kind of lacked. Um, we have produced some adjustments to the receivables. But again, subsequent, uh, you know, we sat down with uh, the staff involved, showed them what reports to run. Um, I, I think that's something we we're going to follow up to um, later on this month. To ensure that was taking place. Could you explain that again? I'm a little confused by that. Uh, so there's uh, the general ledger, which is you, it, it records all the assets, so it's segregated from who's collecting it. Uh, so they're accounting for the accounts receivable. Uh, they're maintaining a balance um, that's not in detail. They do the commitments, they post the revenue there. And at the end of a given month, they're saying, okay, this is what who owes us money for these water and sewer accounts and at the collector's level, the details maintained of the residents like Joe Smith, XYZ, that was not being balanced to the general ledger on a periodic basis. So I, I believe that it was the, the specific issue in that was with the billings. Uh, the, the billings weren't coming over to the general ledger in a correct manner. So the issue wasn't at the collection level, it was more at the billing level. Any other questions, comments? Well, once again, Mr. Scanlon, I thank you. Scintillating, but it, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's it's the 
it's among the least sexy things that we do yet at the same time it is the most important and the oversight of it's always good to hear from you in particular an independent auditor in your assessment I mean we can we can brag on whatever we want and it doesn't really have substantive backing unless someone correct that's the whole process yeah. of it um, you know that's usually usually when there's issues there's a lot of questions a lot of crowds behind me there's a lot of you know you know your, your controls are working um, you're, they're doing a good job well that's that's very good to hear and once again very reassuring uh, Councilor Bidwell. I actually did have one quick sure. question. Sure, well, go for it. Um, just very generally, I, I'm, I'm under the impression that for a community, a, a city of this size, to uh, get the bond rating that we did is, is rather unusual. Is, 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 what, what is your, uh, your, 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 your experience uh, for a, a city of 30,000 to, to achieve that sort of bond rating? Well, that's a lot of hard work. It's uh, committed to your financial policies. It's establishing reserves. You know, there's four components of a bond rating. You know, two you almost can't control. It's really your economy. I mean, one being in Massachusetts, overall you're put into a category with everybody. So you kind of have control over your reserves and management. Uh, you adopted a sound set of policies and you stuck to them. You know, you built your zeros over the years. And that's what built your bond rating. I mean, it. I, it's not. I know you're one of. I want to say at one time 60 something that had a triple A rating. Um, so it should be a, a pat on the back for that. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Any other questions, uh, Council yes, Barge? Yes, and uh, Mr. Scanlon, I'd like to thank you also. Um, even when we had you come in and do the presentation in Finance Committee, it was excellent, and I thank you again for being here today. Oh, yeah, no problem. I'll come, in, come anytime. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for your good work, and uh, thank you for affirming our good work, or the mayor's good work. In <laughs> so, we appreciate that. <laughs> have any questions any time, don't let's take the call of the office. Something comes up. You have a concern. You have an area where you have a concern. Don't let's take to contact us. You bet. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank have a good night. Okay. We're, we're on to the consent agenda, which is substantial, um, and I'll start. Item 17.299, that's to approve the second-hand dealer license petition for vintage treasures. Also, item 17.300, that's to approve applications for taxi cab licenses, six <coughs> for cosmic cab. Item 17.286, various appointments to committees, all with a positive recommendation from the Committee on City Services. Uh, the Planning Board. Ann Brooks of 20 Bridge Road, Unit 1, Northampton. The term start March 2016, expiring June 2019. It's a reappointment. Mark Sullivan of 83 Maynard Road, Northampton. The term to start March 2015, expiring June 2018. Also a reappointment. And John Lutz of 291 Haydenville Road in Leeds. Uh, the term March 2015 to June 2018. Also a reappointment. The Central Business Architecture Committee uh, has Robert Walker, 13 Fort Street in Northampton. Uh, the term to start April 2017, expiring June 2020, a reappointment. Uh, Alan Tierney of uh, 30 Francis Street in Northampton, the term beginning April 2017, expiring June 2020, also a reappointment. Uh, Council on Aging, John Krasinski of Junior, 39 Lino Terrace in Florence, the term starting April 2017, expiring June 2020, also a reappointment. Uh, Staunton Williams, Jr. of 11 Barrett Place in Northampton. The term to start 2015, uh, November 2015, expiring June 2018. This is a reappointment. Uh, for the Board of Registrars, Sandra Hallowell of 43 Lady Slipper Lane in Northampton. The term to start April 2017, expiring June 2020, a reappointment. On the Disability Commission, Ruth McGrath of 52 Longview Drive in Florence, term to uh, start 20, uh, November 2016, expiring June 2019, an, a reappointment. Conservation Commission, Tim Parshall of uh, 76 North Street, North Tampa, term to start March 2017, expiring June 2020, a reappointment. And in the Redevelopment Authority, Tara Brewster, 67 Chestnut Street in Florence, the term to start April 2017, expiring June 2018, and this is replacing the unexpired term of Royce and Quinn. Um, also, 
296 this appointments to the Council on Aging with positive recommendation from the Committee on City Services. We have Mary Lestowski of 84 Bradf Bradford Street in Northampton. Term to start April 2017, expiring June 2020, a reappointment. Lorraine Wyman of 380 Bro Acrebrook Drive in Florence, the term to start April 2017, expiring June 2020, also a reappointment. And then also to refer various appointments to committees to the Committee on City Services uh, for Parks and Recreation Commission, James Ryan of 56 Leonard Street in Leeds, the term to uh, start May 2017, expiring June 2020, and that's replacing the unexpired term of Thomas Parent. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Michael Laga of 33 uh, Moser Street in Northampton. The uh, term to start June 2017, expiring June 2020, that's a reappointment. On the Conservation Committee Commission, uh, we have Kevin Lake of 35 Washington Avenue in Northampton. The term to start March 2017, expiring June 2020, this is a reappointment. The Trust Fund Committee, uh, David Hersips of 22 Warburton Way. Uh, in Northampton, term to start November 2016, expiring June 2019. This is also a reappointment. And then also to approve the minutes from April 20, 2017, uh, City Council meeting. Moved. 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 Second. Motions made and seconded. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, now we go into recess for uh, okay. Committee on Finance to convene at the helm. Council Murphy. Thank you. Uh, Pam, would you call the roll of finance, please? Councilor Murphy? Here. Councilor Present. Councilor Nash? Here. Councilor Hunt? Present. Excellent. Uh, first item is to approve our minutes of April 20th. Do we have a motion? motion. Make a motion. Second. Any corrections, alterations, or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Great. All right. And we have some financial orders. The mayor's getting in the saddle to answer our questions here. Um, Upon the recommendation of the mayor, this is 17.302, in order to authorize the appropriation of $291,000 from receipts reserved for appropriation from the sale of land account. It's going to school roof repair projects. This is the Fiker School. Order that 291,000 be appropriated from the receipts reserved for appropriation, the sale of land account, uh, with 194,200 and $36 being appropriated to the repair and replacement of the Bridge Street Elementary School um, being repaired under the MSBA Accelerated Repair Program and $96,864 being appropriated to the repair and replacement of the roof at the Leeds Elementary School being repaired under the MSBA uh, Accelerated Repair Program. Do we have a motion put on the floor? Make a motion. Second. And the mayor's here for questions. Uh, th this is um, one of two orders related to the uh, roof projects. Um, and <coughs> these um, were actually uh, also called out in the capital improvement uh, program as well. Um, we did uh, at the end of uh, April uh, sell the Fiker School after a uh, procurement and bidding process to the Nonatuck Community School, um, who's been the tenant for a long time. and. I know you met some of them when they came to the council to talk about their lease. Um, and uh, and so we're excited that, that and I know Nonatuck is excited that they now um, own the building. And so we are going to immediately appropriate the sale proceeds um, to uh, toward the city's share, uh, which is about 45% of the cost of the uh, roof projects that were major roof projects that we're doing using MSBA grant money. Mm -hmm. So this is the first of two orders to do that. Mm -hmm. Any uh, questions for the mayor on this one? As it, and we've all saw this. Uh, Councillor. Are you empowered to describe uh, whether you got more than one bid for it? Totally. Yeah, no, there, there was, um, we put out an RFP. Um, the, we had a fair market appraisal done on the building, mm -hmm. um, which it appraised at $290,000. Mm -hmm. So our RFP stipulated that the minimum bid we would accept is $290,000. We had some other conditions as a part of the RFP. Um, well, first and foremost, whoever bought it would have to honor the lease that's, that we currently have uh, for another 30 <coughs> or so months with Nantuck Community School. Um, it also required that the building must remain in use as an early childhood education center for 25 years. It also stipulated that um, 
the community space in the building must continue to be made available to the community. Um, and there was a stipulation that if the building were purchased by a tax exempt organization, um, that they would be required to pay a uh, payment in lieu of taxes equivalent to 25% of what they would pay in taxes if they were taxable. Um, we had um, two people take out bid packets, um, but only one actually uh, returned a bid, and that was not a tough community school. So, well, thank you. And obviously, as you know, the city has included the 25% provision for a pilot on other sales, and obviously, I'm glad it was included in this one. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, we've had pilots on other land sales, yeah. and it was part of the. Um, it was part of the uh, Florence Grammar School RFP, which ultimately was bought by a private entity, so it was a moot point. But um, uh, obviously, uh, yeah, we, we certainly, if, if we're going to return uh, a city uh, property you know, to, to private, uh, we would like to try to have it generate some tax revenue for the city, and, or if, short of that, some payment in lieu of taxes. It just seems like a good resolution for the building, so thank totally you. Totally agree. Congratulations. Yep. Yeah. And, and Obviously, it's no longer a liability on the city's right. books, and, and we can get out of the rental rental business. So, well, it's also it's also a wonderful resolution for the for the, for the kids and the most the parents in that in, in, in that school. It's most a, definitely, there's a, a lot of a lot of great families who are trying to make this happen. More most easy. definitely. So it's a great. And this is the. I mean, they've been in business much longer than they've been at Nottatuck. This yeah. is like the third location they've yeah. been in. So um, I think they're happy to, to know that they have a more permanent home. Um, yep. So, Council of Bars. Yes, and <coughs> I agree with that statement, Mayor, that you just stated, because just hearing them all, I can imagine how happy they are now that they own that building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the school committee was obviously concerned because prior to the surplus, it wasn't a city building, it was a school building that the school committee and the mm -hmm. school department was responsible for maintaining and um, and obviously we have lots of other needs including these two major roof projects so the idea that we would hold on to a building that no longer had any school use that we might have to potentially replace a roof on um, just didn't make a lot of sense so we wanted to um, get out from under that capital line as well thank you I think and I also would add that the Bay State Village neighborhood is happy as well because this is they use the community space. They use the community space. Uh, it's where the association meets, and I know other organizations use it as well. And and they've been great neighbors. It's always been a neighborhood school, so it's totally in keeping with the neighborhood. Any other questions for the mayor? In in the interest of transparency, I have to disclose that I actually attended the Nonatuck School over 55 years ago, <laughs> <laughs> and was judge delinquent because I actually uh, uh, former mayor. Musani's daughter sat in front of me, and I actually uh, cut off her ponytail with a pair of round edge scissors <laughs> and was wow. uh, oh. went for that. <laughs> you should have. Wow, I, think the, I think the statute of limitations has run out on that offense. <laughs> Come clean on that. Wow. I have reformed myself. Good to know. <laughs> uh, so, um, in, <laughs> so, well, Councilor Dwight lost his point. Right. Right. <laughs> they, know, they know better. So, in finance, all in favor of a positive recommendation, aye. please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. All right. Again, upon the recommendation of the mayor, this is 17.303 in order to appropriate funds <laughs> from a revolving fund for the Leeds Elementary School roof project. Order that the funds remaining in the Fiker School Rental Revolving Fund in the amount of $124,167.84 be appropriated to the MSBA Leeds Elementary School roof project, phase two. Do a motion of finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. All right, and the mayor's. Shorter okay. version, this is just part two, and this was the fund which in which we deposited the rent um, that was paid on the building, with the idea being that if we needed to make capital repairs to the building, it provided a fund, so we would we were keeping the rental proceeds. Well, the school department was keeping the rental proceeds in it to pay for any expenses on the building. But obviously, we no longer need that, and so we are going to just devote that again to the to the school roof project. Mm -hmm. just, when a fund zeroes out, 
can you just eliminate it administratively or do we need it, to it just goes away it yeah just, it's just gone it's gone okay. yeah so um we, we need to transfer out the funds mm -hmm. and and actually we, it could just be closed out to free cash at the end of the year if we right. just said we don't want it anymore okay. um it would just disappear and then just flow to our free cash but in this case we we had a need and yeah. and um and i had also pledged to the school committee that we would um, because it was a school building that we would use the proceeds specifically for a school capital project so mm -hmm. any other questions for the mayor no. then in finance all in favor of a positive recommendation please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed all right and uh, this is 17.304 in order to rescind borrowing authorizations for the acquisition of land between Glendale and West Hampton Road order that the $450,000 of borrowing authorized under the <coughs> on May 19, 2016 for the acquisition of land located between Glendale and West Hampton Roads to expand open space preservation adjacent to the Mineral Hills Conservation Area be rescinded as the city has received a land self-help act grant for the acquisition. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. And we do this you know, this is uh, for Councillor Nash. You might not have seen this before, but we authorize these. And then if we get the grant, we rescind the authorization. So we mm -hmm. support it to get the grant. And if the grant comes in, we rescind the borrowing. Yes, it's a condition of the grant that we have to commit the full faith and credit to the project. And so we, we do a, a bar, an authorization. Um, and then we got the grant in this case. So now we want to rescind it because, you know, uh, uh, when you look at our audit audited statements, there's also what our debt obligations are. And so this, if we didn't rescind this, this would still show up as a debt obligation, even though we weren't ever intending to borrow the money. So that's why we come back to you and rescind it um, so that it doesn't count against our overall debt obligations and we don't, have an, we don't need it anymore. So this is very frequent with either the land grants or the park grants um, that we've done over time. But initially we have to support it yes. with the borrowing and then when we get the grant, we rescind the borrowing. Yes. Yeah. Any other questions for the mayor on this one? Hearing, oh, you? Yes, I am very happy about the, um, the self-help act grant because the land is very valuable out there and Wayne and his staff work tirelessly to make this stuff happen and I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council. If we're good, then all in favor of positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 And the last one is 17306, in order to appropriate free cash and approve expenditure of a gift from Smith College for Planometrics Mapping Services. Whereas the Department of Public Works and the Office of Planning and Sustainability increasingly rely on a computer-aided design and GIS-based layers in the uh, system for many of the city functions, and whereas the city requires a robust citywide set of planometric features with which to improve its CAD-based layers in the GIS system, and whereas the digital panometrics will provide high quality and accurate information relative to the physical infrastructure of the city, and whereas planometrics mapping provides a horizontal depiction of map features and a two-dimensional plane without any reference to contours or topographic relief to better define such natural and cultural features as streams, roads, shorelines, waterways, building footprints, reservoirs, bridges, roads, overpasses, sidewalks, and parking lots. And whereas Smith College desires to improve its campus mapping functions and wishes to contribute to the cost of the planometrics mapping services, order therefore that the city of Northampton appropriate from the FY17 undesignated fund balance the amount of $33,744 and the city approved the expenditure of a gift from Smith College for $10,000 for the purpose of contributing to the mapping service for a total <coughs> appropriation of $43,744 for planimetrics mapping services. We have a motion. Make a motion. Second. All right. So um, it's all clear. It's clear, crystal clear just from reading that, I'm sure. Um, and so I thought actually a, a better way to describe it is I have a little visual tonight. Um, so we, um, uh, as described in the ordinance, we currently, uh, you know, use GIS and we use aero photo mapping and, you know, you go on Google Earth and you can kind of see it's a, it's a photograph. Um, and what the planimetrics will do is actually better define um, and zero in on all of the structures, like right down to like a curb, 
and a tree and a fire hydrant and you know roadway delineation and other utilities and um, and it gives us such a it gives a much greater level of detail um, and as the city is now moving more and more towards GIS based uh, software and systems you know we're going to be going to um, a new municity um, uh, software system that's going to be used by building department it's going to be used by um, uh, planning department DPW it's going to be used by a number of departments and it's all kind of GIS based on GIS layers so that when someone when a technician or an inspector is in the field and they're using a tablet they're they're relying on accurate data to, f to locate where that catch basin is or to locate where the shutoff is or to if they're trying to figure out the roadway um, you know what the what the um, layout of the roadway is so um, so that that's sort of what plan metrics is and we would do it we would we basically um, have done an RFP and uh, this company Sanborn uh, which is one of the national like experts in this um, um, has a has, we have a proposal it'll sort of look at about 46 square miles of the city and do all the planimetric mappings for that Smith College is very in, was very interested in having this same kind of planimetric detail for their mapping um, which is why they want to they're basically going to contribute ten thousand dollars toward the cost so that they can have access to the planimetric data for their <coughs> campus as well um, and so uh, this we have a quick little video that's about a minute long, which sort of shows you um, what uh, what the typical type of uh, GIS aero photo mapping that cities and towns have, and what we have, and then it shows you what the planimet the kind of detail that the planimetric provides, and it sort of gives you a sort of a before and after. So I thought that would be a, a better way to kind of illustrate it because I'm a visual person. So um, if you want to start the uh, YouTube video. So there's no sound, so I can, oh. we can hum along. Uh, so this, these are just showing various communities, and this shows you what the planimetric does in terms of defining all of the, um, all of the structures. Um, and it also GIS layers them, so you have um, measurements. Um, you know, you're seeing it on a big screen, but it gets down to um, the kind of you know, detail that we don't currently have. Um, and it just kind of shows you it's, it's um, you know, taking just random streets. This is, you know, shows you, you know, in some cases you can see, uh, you know, lines in parking lots uh, and curbs in parking, islands in parking lots. So. I think these are different communities they've done. It's amazing. It's a much higher resolution and it gives you a much higher accuracy in terms of um, in terms of the measurement. So I think that should be about it. It just it just runs through some various scenarios. I don't know where these communities are. I don't know where Tamu is. It must be someplace <laughs> in Texas or something. So, I think so yeah. And this is University Park, which is probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, you I, I see that it also mentions uh, CAD and. Uh, three-dimensional uh, uh, renderings of, of structure similar to what well, I'm assuming is similar to what uh, the palimetric systems that's used by uh, Apple, for instance, mm -hmm. or Apple mapping yep. for particular cities. You can actually get a three-dimensional perspective that you can move around. It renders the buildings in three-dimensional form. This might be, this, this probably can be used in conjunction with a with a program to do that, I don't know that this this will will end up with a product like that. But I know that like architectural firms use if they have that level of detail, they can do renderings like that. I know. I mean, I even know like the NHS students who've been doing um, mm -hmm. been doing renderings of our buildings. I don't know that they're doing planimetrics, but they're doing some kind of a CAD type, you know. Minecraft like type Minecraft software thing. that they're using. <laughs> a teenager to come and explain this because I this is really <laughs> way above my 
pay and brain grade. Because w what it does is um, that form of palometrics actually gives you, as I said, three-dimensional perspective so you can get height yeah. uh, as opposed to just looking straight down. Yeah. You can get height analysis, uh, uh, you know, structures relative to other structures. And this definitely gives us more spatial uh, measurements. It gives us more accurate measurements of, you know, distances and things like that. I don't know. I can't. I can find out between now and second reading whether it does all that. Um, but our basic concern was about having, you know, being able to um, have a better uh, a better mapping system, particularly for the many structures that we have and infrastructure that we have, um, and to be able to catalog. You know, we're doing a tree inventory now of the city, and so to be able to have a really good GIS layer, um, you know, based on tree, uh, you know, where shade tree are shade trees and where the public right of way is, and whether trees are in the public right of way or not in the right of way, um, is will be very critical going forward. Councillor. Um, I'll note Smith is contributing a little bit less than 25%, which is, you know, a percent that we throw around a lot. Um, do you feel like that's a, is it a reasonable contribution for? Um, in terms of the, you know, we've got, you know, 46, acre, uh, 46 square miles, and I don't know the exact square miles of their campus. Mm -hmm. My sense is it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be, uh, a quarter, a 25 percent. Right. Um, sure, it's a lot less. It's a lot less. So I don't know that it was. Uh, it was. I think it was done in trying to do it in re relative to the size of the campus and the rest of the city. Um, it is a suspiciously round number. It's ten thousand dollars. So I'm assuming it was rounded up to a to a higher number. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I'm comfortable with it. I mean, we would be doing it anyway, mm -hmm. with whether or not Smith was interested in it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just know that our GIS. Uh, folks were talking to some of their folks about it, and um, they were inter they were planning to do something like this. So the fact that the city's already doing it, they just want to piggyback on it. So, yeah, okay. yes. So, do, do we wind up with a with with, with a one-time set of planimetric mappings, or do we wind up with software and capacity to continue revising? It gets incorporated into our it gets incorporated into our um, into our uh, current GIS layers. And um, I mean, anytime we do, literally for like the mapping we do now, um, you know, Mass GIS like flies a plane over the state and, and does the sort of photo um, mapping, which gets updated every, you know, so many years. Um, and so this, this again, that's a, that's a photo image and then this is going to actually um, really focus, as it says, on the sort of the two-dimensional, and it's going to be the structures and identifying and delineating all the various structures. So, in terms of updates, that's a good question. I'll, I can try to find that oh, so out. It's a one. It's a one-time mapping set of layers that we it have is. To our system. It is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, I think that there are certain companies that have the technology and the capacity to do this. I don't think it's something that any community on their own would have the capacity to do. Okay. Um, so. Obviously, though, when we, you know, when we, um, we all, we do have the ability to update our GIS system um, with, you know, with, we have GIS tr sort of tracking devices that allow you to plot GIS. And so we can, you know, if we add a structure at some point, we do have the ability to ta sort of tag it on GIS and add it to the, to the layers, um, you know, manually as we go along. It's just to go out and you know, to, to take on the entire task of the city, it's just something that's left to uh, people that do this um, professionally. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for the mayor? Hearing none, all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any business we did not anticipate from any of the members? Hearing none, a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. aye. Thank you. So we come out of recess and get back to the business at hand. And we'll start off with, well, we'll start off with those financial orders you guys just discussed. Uh, first one up is 17.302. That's an order to authorize the appropriation of $291,100 from receipts reserved for appropriation. This is the sale of land account to school roof repair projects. Motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion on this? 
Councilor Roll call, please. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Hess? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. That passes in first reading. Item 17.303, in order to appropriate funds from revolving funds for the Leeds Elementary School roof project. First reading. Move approval. Second. Second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion on this? Roll call, please. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Okay, that passes in first reading. Item 17.304, that's an order to rescind borrowing authorization for the acquisition of land between Glendale and West Hampton Roads. Mr. First reading. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? Roll call, Pam. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Passes in first reading. Item 17.306 three zero six is an order to appropriate free cash and approve expenditure from a gift from Smith College for palometric uh, mapping services. First reading. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yes, again. Sorry. He, he only gets the one. <laughs> <laughs> this is two of them. Bonus vote. Hold that, hold Why that vote. Uh, that's just in first reading. <laughs> Item 17.297, this is in order to approve the uh, appropriation for conversion from prior year funding of EMS stipends to the current funding of EMS stipends is second reading. <coughs> <coughs> second. Motion's made and second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. There you go. All right, that passes. In, uh, in second reading. So this is next up also in second reading item 17.298 that's in order to accept a donation of Eaton Rack un uh, uninterrupted power source units Both for the value of $20,000. Yes. Motion in second. Discussion. Roll call please. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 All right, that passes in second reading. Now we move on to ordinances. Uh, item 17.2.301, uh, that's an ordinance to amend chapter 312-110 of the code book, and this is to refer to the Committee on Legislative Matters and Transfer. Okay. Motion's made and seconded to refer. Any discussion on the referral? All those in, whoops, yeah. No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, any opposed? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, okay. Um, <laughs> I have here, <coughs> this is an advertised um, hearing that we're advertising the bejesus out of because as we all know, the discussion we're promoting and trying to expand the discussion of um, of the budget. The mayor uh, has gone throughout the town and out the villages and dales and and presented uh, his budget to interested community members. But this is the following public hearing is hereby advertised. This is in accordance with the Charter of Northampton, Massachusetts, Article 7, Finance and Fiscal Procedures, Section 7-4, an action on the operating budget. This would be a public hearing by order of the City Council, a public hearing to be held on Thursday, June 1st, 2017, at 7.05 p.m. here in the City Council Chambers located in the Wallace J. Puchowski Municipal Building. That's at 212 Main Street, Northampton, Massachusetts. The City Council will consider the proposed FY 2018 budget and hear all persons who wish to be heard thereon. The proposed FY 2018 budget of Northampton, Massachusetts will be available for inspection by the public in the following locations at <coughs> specified times online at the City of Northampton website at www.northamptonma.gov. And also at the Forbes Library on 20 West Street, Northampton, 
Uh, the hours are Monday 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Tuesday 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., Wednesday 9 p.m., uh, I'm guessing that's 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., as opposed to 9 p.m. and 9 p.m., because you won't be able to get there. Uh, Thursday 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., Friday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Also at the Lilly Library at 19 Meadow Street in Florence, hours are uh, Monday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Tuesday 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Wednesday they're closed. Thursday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. And also at the City Clerk's Office at 210 Main Street in Northampton, Massachusetts, the hours Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30. So, um, and the Mayor and I had a conversation today about how we were going to do our little state-of-the-art public chit-chat uh, relative to the budget, and um, we're going to develop, we've decided that we're going to develop a, an email address specific to the City Council, just the City Council that would, that people can send their inquiries there that will be shared. Um, please just simple questions as opposed to uh, long preambles and be gratefully received. Also identify yourself, you need your name and address when you submit your uh, request to have us forward these questions during the hearing. And also uh, we're going to give out my phone number so people can text during the course of the meeting. And for those who are interested, anyone who wants to call and harass me on off hours, it's 413-262-6710. So bring it. These questions will be done live almost. It will be done live. Yeah, it will live. be done live. Uh, Councilor Murphy will be presiding, and I'll be the, the monkey on the sideline reading the questions. Reading the questions. Uh, <laughs> are there any more? Are there? Could you just state the date and time again? Well, uh, for that meeting, what's the 28th? The 23rd. The 23rd. 23rd. Right. I think. Tuesday. Tuesday, 23rd. Tuesday, 23rd, the, the, the Finance Committee meeting. Yes. Council Bidwell? That, that summary that you just read, can, can, can you get that out to all, all of us so that we can? Yes, and this is, this is I, what I read you is also the advertisement will be in the Gazette, but we can get you a copy of this. Uh, uh, along with the information about the. Uh, oh, about my the, phone the, number the, and the, the phoning in and the, and the email address? Uh, yes, email yes, we'll, we'll get you all that. So. Okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, any other questions, comments? No. Uh, no new business. Any information requests? No? So, well, so, that oops. leaves us with one thing left to do. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. Made to adjourn. And is there a second? There's a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all very much. That's all, folks.